on, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Issues and Answers. My name is Dale Green, host of the program, and we have a very enlightening guest today. I call her the Great American Success Story. We're about to celebrate the 4th of July, and the nation got its independence, and Angelica Norton will tell you how she has worked to get her Declaration of Independence. Angelica, welcome to our program. How are you today? Hello. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. <laughs> If I want to go on the internet to YouTube and see Seed Sowing Sister, what does that mean? What, what What's that all about? Uh, seed Sowing Sister is an individual, which is myself, um, a person that plants seeds of hope, motivation, inspiration, and education for the community. Right. I look at you as a poster child for somebody who has overcome the odds in a lot of, a good thing. In a lot of ways <laughs> in life. Uh, dysfunctional dad, uh, uh, sort of rough growing up, mm -hmm. if you will, in terms yes. of dysfunction and challenges, and yet you have overcome that. Uh, tell us about the early years, if you will. Oh, the early years of Angelica is very interesting. Um, I grew up in College Hill um, housing projects right in the heart of East Tampa. Mm -hmm. um, I was born to two uneducated parents. Uh, my mom was a teen mom. Um, and then from there, I'm second oldest of seven children. So um, I gained and had a lot of responsibilities early on in life. I helped to care for my, my siblings. I learned how to cook. I learned adult responsibilities fairly early right. in life. Yeah. And at 29th and Lake, you were often looking for your dad. I was. <laughs> was often looking for crack cocaine. Yes, yes. My dad, um, back when I was growing up in my early years, um, East Tampa was known for the issues with drugs. Um, crack cocaine was at the height sure. of, you know, whatever demand, it was. Demand. Yeah, the height of, I don't know, yeah, demand back then in the 80s. Um, and um, I saw a lot. You know, growing up in the housing projects, you see a lot. Um, even when your parents try to protect you, you still see a lot. You you see a lot, you pick up on a lot, yeah, and it, it exposes you to a lot. So in a sense, you kind of grow up really fast right. um, mentally. When did the light bulb come on to say, this is not the way I want to live? Oh, very early in life. Uh -huh. Very early in life. One of the, one of the things that... Um, I do contribute to my mother is the fact that she raised us in church. So um, we were always in church. Mm -hmm. And because she couldn't really afford extracurricular activities, and back then the Parks and Recs was pretty much free. So I I lived at the Parks and Recs, um, participating in different um, sports such as cheering, track, you know, kickball was a sport then, you mm -hmm. know. Um, we would compete against other uh, parks and recs within, you know, our city and different things like that. So um, although I had that extracurricular activity and it was for free, um, the other extra extracurricular activity was um, knowing who God was and understanding um, the foundation um, in which my mother wanted to raise us on. And I'm forever thankful for that because that's how I connected to my purpose and my vision very early in life. I knew, um, if I could say that, I knew that there was something special about um, my journey. Mm -hmm. And I knew that early in life that I had a purpose. Um, it was always brewing in my spirit. It was always on my mind that I'll do something different. Even when I chose to go different routes and became a team mom myself, um, you know, fell short of my environment, sure. <laughs> the things that I saw, I still always knew deep down that, you know, this isn't me. This isn't the real me. Um, and yeah, I knew right. very early. Let's fast forward, if you will, to yeah. another time at a certain community center I went to something that you hosted called Lunch and Learn. Yes, yes, yes. And I had lunch and I did learn. And you did learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Cecil and Sister was incorporated as my business. It wasn't until 2015 that God laid it on my heart that Cecil and Sister, the business was myself. My life became my business. My testimony became my business. Um, the things that I had overcome became my business. Um, the resilience 
that I had became my um, my business. So Cito and Sister, um, it's it's my name changed. So my name is Angelica, but I am known for by Cito and Sister because I started doing the work of Cito and Sister. So we all have a purpose, and in discovering my purpose. Um, no different than in the Bible when God changed Abraham name to Abram and then Jacob name to Israel. I had a new name. So with my new life, my new responsibilities, walking in my purpose, understanding my vision and the, for the purpose he created me for, I now understood my name and I also understood my brand. My brand is that of resilience. We all have a brand. Right. And then you started a school involving students who had come up with a, let's say, challenging upbringing, I challenging I love, I love teenagers. Um, I, <laughs> I love teenagers. I love them because they're misunderstood a lot of times. And in the misunderstanding, they're, they're misguided and they need to be redirected because that was my story. Mm -hmm. um, in hosting my lunch and lunch, just to go back just a little and rewind it, I wanted to educate the community on understanding um, at-risk youth, understanding the dynamics of poverty and... and root um, causes. Yes, the root causes and um, what that means, not only to those who are living it and experiencing it, but for those who are attempting to work with it and within it, meaning with the individuals and within the communities. Um, a lot of people, they have these preconceived notions about what poverty really is, and it's nothing that you can learn from a textbook. It's not until you get on the front lines and really have conversations and really shake hands with the people and really dive in and come in their community, you know, get, get in their core of living that you discover what poverty. Of, the epitome of been there and done that. Yes, yes, yes. So it was really important for me to do that. So in doing so, the Lunch and Learns just really kick-started everything for uh, my initiative to educate people on poverty. And it's not easy to lead with the word poverty because it's not an attractive word. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not a, an attractive discussion to have. A lot of people run well, from it. But it's reality. But it is a harsh reality. Right. Then some folks from the Juvenile Welfare Board in Pinellas County tapped you on the shoulder and said. Yes, they did. They scooped me right up. Um, I want you to do something for us. One of their senior directors happened to be at one of my lunch and learns. And this is how God opened doors for you. And he says that your gift will make room for you. And in doing so, they, sw they swept me up. She she um, attended one of my lunch and learns um, at the YMCA in C Central City YMCA right off of Palm Avenue. And um, I just took the initiative and said, you know, I'm not going to wait for somebody to build a table or platform for me to stand on or for me to sit at. I'm going to build one for them to come. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have to build it and they will come. And my lunch and learns would sell out in a matter of an hour or so mm -hmm. at $7, you know. Sure. <laughs> and, such a deal. Yeah, such a deal. <laughs> and then you would get um, not only... The, the data and the statistics that, you know, the DJJ or what the Florida um, guideline for poverty was or whatever the case may be, but you would get my hands-on experience working with at-risk youth. I have worked with thousands of at-risk youth, going into jail, working with um, juvenile offenders, um, working in some of the lowest Hillsborough County schools, having contracts through Hillsborough County schools. I designed my curriculum, and it was based um, upon the, the knowledge of working with at-risk youth who are experiencing and battling poverty. Right. So you dealt with a lot of issues then. Yes. And you provided the students or the participants with some answers. Absolutely. Of how to deal, how to navigate life. I, I f absolutely, because <laughs> it's it's interesting because we have GPS now, and it helps us to navigate where we're going so we from don't here get to lost that point a to from point, point, point exactly. But we didn't. We don't have that in in poverty. People who are living in poverty, they go, oh, it's uh, they have a lack of resources. It's a lack of finances. It's a lack of vision. It's a lack of purpose. It's a lack of hope. There's a lot of lack mm -hmm. in poverty. And when you're a child mm -hmm. and you are 
lacking in all of these areas, you're Basic only going to of life. Yes, you're going to lean to chaos. Mm -hmm. You're going to lean towards disruption. You're going to lean towards confusion and dysfunction. And dysfunction, absolutely. Right. And now let's fast forward to your uh being tapped on the shoulder when I said <laughs> yes. Come here. I think you need to. I think you need to complete the journey in terms of. Uh, hey, here's something called the Pell. Yes, 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 yes. Well, first yeah. of all, for those who don't know, Mr. Del Green is my mentor. Been my mentor for over a dec. I mean, we may be going on two decades now. Yes, I true. was in my early thirties then. Yes. Yeah. So, um, now when you're older school. I know. Oh, I'm considered that. That is Imagine so crazy. That, that is so crazy. Card <laughs> right? Soon. Wait, wait. Maybe seven, eight years. Okay, <laughs> but right, I'm close. Right. Okay. Discounts are good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a discount. But um, Mr. Dale Green, he was one of these people that you meet who see something in you. And then again, a door opens and he's like, hey, this young lady, there's something. I can't speak for you, but I'm just trying to foreshadow, paraphrase, you sure. said something special about this young lady. I want to get to know her. So he is the reason, guys, that I am even in radio. Um, this man to right God here. be the glory. <laughs> uh, you're giving me way too much credit. No, it is to you. It was because of you. I'm just a facilitator. But facilitators. Dream maker, if you will. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so I'm so facilitators are delivery. Yes, they are they deliverers and they they pass on things. So you are able to not only pass the baton to your biological daughter, but to your mentee daughter as well. Because I picked up the baton. Known as daughter number four. <laughs> yes, I'm known as daughter number four, <laughs> and I'm honored to be known as daughter, daughter number four. So I I have to remind him I'm daughter number four. So um he saw me and he started you know connecting with. With me we exchanged numbers and then from there he was like i want to do an interview with you and then i'm going to attend what um one of your lunch and learns and he he stayed close to me and every conversation we had it was inspirational every conversation we had it was motivational he had a list of names of people for me to connect with he had a a list of things that he thought Networking was best for me to do yes <laughs> <laughs> that when you left the meeting with mr dale green you were gonna have some homework i need you to call these people i need you to call these people and i need you to do a b c and d by the time we meet again and i would have it done and i'll come back and i would say okay well this is the dialogue we had and this happened here and this happened here so you always had homework for me. You always had an always assignment for me. Too. Yes, I, I was. You got, you got your work done. Because I was hungry. Mm -hmm. I was hungry for more. I was, I was hungry to learn more. I was hungry um, to fulfill my purpose. You were hungry for success. And for success, or some absolutely. Or thereof. Yes. Right. Really was. Tell us a little bit about when you talk about business. I couldn't help but think about that Office Depot commercial, taking care of business every day, which is what you do. Yeah. But. You have a show on another network, if you will, yes. AM on the AM band, uh -huh. and uh, you talk about businesses succeeding and what it takes, the foundations of business. Yes, yes, I Some do. Some of those issues and answers mm -hmm. in running a business. And one of the reasons for me um, pressing the issue when it comes to entrepreneurship, because entrepreneurship saved my life. It honestly did when, like I said, I was that at-risk youth living in East Tampa with the lack of motivation, the lack of vision, the lack of hope. And I had to turn to myself with these three small babies and say, well, what am I good at? I didn't believe that I was good at anything. I didn't believe that God had gifted me to do something special because of where geographically I had come from. My zip code didn't represent me well. And it wasn't accept, accepted well. So I wore the label of being rejected mm -hmm. as a person who would be rejected, as a, as a nobody, as a nothing. And unfortunately, I'm not the only one who wore those titles as scars. Your associates, your friends, your yes, family. Yes, everybody, members. everybody. And um, it's not. And when you are confident, that means that it was a culture that was within your home. And that culture was not within my home. So it left you a little dismayed and um, confused. 
and um, just searching, constantly searching. People, people who are experiencing poverty, born and raised in poverty, they're constantly searching. They're constantly searching for something. It's like being blindfolded and you're just walking, trying to touch something in in hopes that it's something that you can hold on to for dear life. And then I explain it as you're constantly grieving because you all you never have enough. As soon as you get something, it's leaving. It has to go out. As soon as you make some money, it has to go out. So it was important for me to begin teaching entrepreneurship. In my years of mentoring and Hillsborough County Schools and building my own school and then um, meeting you and you pressing the issue of going back to college and you introduced me to the Ecker Pell program. Um, it's a program for experienced learners. I had no college credits um, when I went to meet with the school at advisor and I knew I was only going to this school because this is what Mr. Dell Green said and I need to do what Mr. Dell Green tell me to do. <laughs> obedient one? <laughs> yes, I am very obedient. I am very obedient and it's funny that you say um, obedient one because obedience is better than sacrifice and that's what the Bible says. So when people look at my life and they're like, how are you able to do all of these things? Because I am obedient. I am obedient. If God says go left, I go left. If someone with more um, tells me to a person with less what to do to get more, you have to be obedient. If you procrastinate, if you abort the mission, then disobedience leads to lack. Sounds like you had to walk the walk and talk the talk. Yes. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. So there's not a time that you would instruct me to do something that I would not carry it out because I looked up to you, um, and I still do. Um, I, I look up kind. to you You're to be a father figure, and I am not trying to tear up. <laughs> but <laughs> while I have the opportunity, because a lot of times you don't get to tell people, it's in their absence that you tell people what they mean to you. Sure. I appreciate it. I take it and I accept it. And I, I appreciate you. And when I saw you the other day and um, you was just like, hey, you're going to come on my show. We're going to talk. And I saw you sitting there and I went home that evening and I said, you know, when is my time to bow down? And when is my time for God to sit me down? I can only pray that the seeds that I've sown stand up for me. And I am standing for you. You've done good. You've done good. You, I am you have done real good. I'm standing as a I'm so representation proud. of you. I'm so proud of you. And I would not never let you down. You're a great American success story right here in front of me. I mean, that <laughs> means a lot to me. And the reason I say you give me too much credit because I didn't take those exams. Mm -hmm. I didn't do those papers. You did those papers. But you believed in me, and it's priceless to believe in somebody. And you, we all can have... Um, our family, and I lacked in a lot of areas of support. But for a complete stranger to come into my life and see something that God gave you the eyes and the heart mm -hmm. to nourish me, to lead me, to support me, right. and to believe in me, I'm forever thankful. Right. Remember, there's no crying in radio. There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in radio. Hey, I never know what tomorrow will bring. Yes, I so I had to take the yes. moment yes. to let you know that if nobody else has ever told you or will ever tell you, your contribution to our city, to our communities, to radio, to education, I'm just being obedient. to the youth. I'm forever thankful. He would drag me on the bus tours too, guys, to college yes, um, tours, and too. I had to take the kids and <laughs> do the work. And I'm forever thankful. With the clipboard. With the clipboard, I did. Sit down. <laughs> Don't talk until you're spoken to. Say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. R e s p c t. Yes. And my best is still yet to come. Yes. And I will honor you. I will recognize you, and I will make not only God myself. But you proud and everyone else who's rooting for me and depending on me. Seed sowing sister. A great Seed sowing sister. Great American success story right in front of us. <laughs> Angelica Norton on <laughs> Issues and Answers. That's a big deal. Issues and Answers with Mr. Dale Green, my mentor. <laughs> yes. We're going to uh, just take a break right now, I guess. And uh, we'll be back with more of our program. 
in just a few moments. Brought to you by In Touch News Radio. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. and answers Dale Green host of the program I asked Daryl Johnson Dale the other day DJ CEO if you will uh, how long I have been doing this I think it's been about a year and uh, time flies when you're having fun Angelica it does always <laughs> just like time is flying by when you're having a 30 minute show and you have a, a very <laughs> competent person over here on the controls handling business and uh, it's really a joy and a pleasure to talk to you and to see that you've come from such a long way. I, I'm so thankful. I'm so some, thankful. You know, there are needs and there are wants, mm -hmm. and you needed some things and you wanted some things, and you have to go out and get them. You have it, the little kid, the snag and tooth kid in elementary school said, <laughs> if it is to be, it's up to me. It's up to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's really interesting because, like I said a little earlier, I always knew that there was something, um, thank you, bigger and better that God had for my life, even in the lowest places of my life, even in the pit of my, in the pit of my life, the darkest place in my life, all I could do was look up. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it was more, every time I would go to sleep, I kept saying, there's more, there's so much more to me. And that is vision. I had to learn that over time, but your vision will never leave you. Right. It will stick with you. Well, give us a preview of coming attractions in terms of uh, status of where you'll be this time, um, this time next year. This time next year. Yeah, this time next year. It's really interesting because this time next year, um, <laughs> really interesting because this is something you don't know. Um, the beginning of the year, I was diagnosed with a blood cancer. So um, with the blood cancer, you know, it kind of threw me back a little bit. I was like, whoa. You know, I went through the five stages of grieving. I, you know, I went through the angry. I went through the emotional, you know. So now I'm at a place where I have accepted it. I have accepted that this is yet another attempt to set me back. But some setbacks are setups for a comeback. Yes. You know, so 
I am really focused, got downloaded in my spirit, um, this initiative called Expand Your Vision 2020. Um, a lot of my audience on social media, they know me for Divorce and Poverty, and that's the name of my my first book, um, Divorce and Poverty, my first. And it's an autobiography of inserts of my life, although I had written and designed curriculum was the first thing that I had written and published and designed, and that was for Hillsborough County Schools because a lot of their programs and their initiatives did not cater to the less fortunate. So I wanted the verbiage, I wanted the, the, the language and the approach and the delivery of the curriculum to speak to them in their environments because that was the only way that I could reach them is to speak directly to sure. their environment because we all have a jargon. So I, when I'm training and facilitating, um, you spoke a little earlier about Juvenile Welfare Board, you know, snatching me up for the past now 12 years and being a facilitator and trainer for them and then designing curriculum such as the Poverty Experience, which was a simulation. That was the first time I was paid $1,000 to design a curriculum for a huge nonprofit. That's a big deal. That is huge. And I didn't even have my degree then. You know, I'm speaking and I'm facilitating and I'm being paid $125 an hour and all trainings were three and a half hours. No degree yet. Right. You're very creative and you're very blessed. And you know it too, don't you? Yes, yes, because you identify it. If you don't identify the gifts that God has given you, how can you put them to work? Mm -hmm. How can you use them? How can you activate them? I have one more assignment for you. Oh. I want you to, to, to design a card for me for Vista, on vistaprint.com mm -hmm. so I can hand them out. I saw a lady today when I was over there getting my wheelchair fixed, and this angel just started praying for me and told me about some medicine some at some pharmacy, Orange Pharmacy mm -hmm. in, uh, on Nebraska Avenue called 3S Tonic. Oh. And she says it's good. She swears by it. 3S Tonic. She said get it because it has something to do with your blood, strengthening your blood. And, well, uh, we both need it. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go over there and check it out and start taking it. Okay. Because uh, when people, when angels just, just sit down on the sofa at the at the health aid store, and she just started praying for me and telling me about my roots and and a lot of uh, prophecy, if you will, mm -hmm. from the Bible, scripture and verse. You better pay attention. When people give you advice out of the clear blue, you, you might want to stop, sit up, and listen. Absolutely. And that's kind of like what happened between you and I. Yeah. Uh, you did stop. You listened. I did. And you <laughs> took advantage. You followed direction. And you created, you charted your own course. You are charting your own course. Yes. As we speak. To God be the glory. That's why I say don't Absolutely. give me too much credit. To God be the glory for the magnificent things he has done in your life and will do in your life, including healing. Amen. You will be a survivor. I'm a two-stroke survivor. Two-stroke survivor. <laughs> two strokes in two days is Amen. no joke. Okay? Just out, just out of the clear blue, just just knocks you down. It does. But no pity party. No pity party. No, Absolutely no, not. No invitations. I don't have any invitations to send out. If it is to be, it's up to me. It's, it's up to you. Physical therapy. Absolutely. You, you do it. Absolutely. You have a certain regiment. They say, take this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ball, right. Take this to thin the blood. You do what they tell you to do. Yeah. Yesterday, um, I received a call from the doctor, and it wasn't the best news that I expected. Sure. Uh -huh. But at the same time, um, I know, <laughs> I know all too well that the enemy will use things to distract you, and. Um, Re receiving reports from the doctor or having medical in, um, issues or things that attack our body is considered a distraction. Mm -hmm. And when we focus on, for for I know for you and I, when we focus on by stripes, I am healed. I stand on that, yeah. you know? And not only that is that I am working my purpose. So I am about my father's business. And I am caring for his children. I'm looking out for his children. I am I'm feeding his children. And I know that he knows that the work that I'm doing. Hands on and giving back. And giving back. And it's Just really because. important. Just because. You see a need to be done. You see there's a need. 
You feel it. And I don't want to be the only one. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want to be the only one. Yes. Yes. I'm going to send a copy of this uh, broadcast over to Jane Castor. uh, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So that you've been there and done that, and maybe you can contribute some other things to the East Tampa area. Yes. And to other neighborhoods and zip codes, 33607 West Tampa, 33610. Yes. yes. Which gets a bad rap. And there's some good, decent, hardworking, honest, God fearing people in that zip code. Yes, absolutely. Everybody is not all, you don't write everybody off. Absolutely. And talk to them condescendingly. Absolutely. They're people, they're human beings. Um, they, have feelings. they have feelings. They have a heart. Emotions. And I do this training exercise when I walk in and there's, you know, two, three hundred people um, and I'm facilitating or speaking. And I'll say, close your eyes and imagine a mother who is about three to four months pregnant, you know, going into her second trimester of pregnancy. And away, she's mind. rubbing her belly and she's so excited about the life that's growing inside her. No mother says, I want my child to grow up to be a menace to society. No mother says, I will raise a dropout. No mother says, yeah, I'm going to raise a juvenile delinquent. No mother says, I want my child to grow up and just do everything the wrong way. And I want him to end up incarcerated. I want him to end up with felonies. No mother in this world says things like that. But what happens is we lose faith, we we lose sight, we lose hope, not only in ourselves, but in humanity. Mm -hmm. We lose it in our government. We lose it in our churches. We lose it. So it begs the question, where is your faith? Yes. And how strong is your faith? Yes. Where is your resolve? Mm -hmm. In fact, a guy, a friend of mine, uh, Keith King and I, started an organization we haven't formalized it's called resolve to succeed Mm -hmm. and uh those words right there resolve i'm going to resolve you make resolutions you resolve to succeed yes in spite of in spite of yeah and a lot of people thought that (laughs) when i would walk into when i returned back to the housing projects in which i grew up Um, When they first met me and I had my school there, the Academy of Excellence, the Academy of Excellence, excellence. And because a lot of us don't show up on earth as who we really are. Mm -hmm. And this is the God given truth. A lot of us show up and we live our lives and then we check out, meaning we we our time expire here and then we move on. And I heard a pastor say once that. God shared with him, a lot of people aren't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Too many people are fronting. Yeah, they are that too. And he said, a lot of them not supposed to be here. He said, I didn't didn't come for them. This wasn't written for their time. And he said, let me go and show you something. And the pastor shared, there was this room, like a storage. And for instance, it said Angelica. And I had all these, these things up here. And he said, there were names and all of their blessings, all of their gifts, and all of their talents were still on the shelf. And they had expired here on earth and transitioned over. And never once got to tap into the gifts and the blessings that God had prepared for them here on earth. I'm going to make sure that I clear my shelf out before I leave here (laughs) to the best of my ability. It all depends on what happens in your life when for the dash. For the dash. That little short period of time. So 1972 for me, in that dash, I know God knows how determined I am with what he's given me. To make a difference. To make a difference. It has always been about making a difference. To be, me going back to school was even a, to make my story better for those that I reach and those that I connect to. Because I remember the kids would always say, they would see me and they're like, how can she relate to us? I said, because I had three children before I was 20, 21 years old. And because I grew up right here on this soil, I walked these same roads that you walking right here. My dad was on crack cocaine right here on 29th and Lake. You know, my mom was a high school dropout. You know, I 
I live this life. You know, I became a teen mom. I became a victim of my environment. There are some things that I'm not proud of that I attempted to do, but God never allowed those things to work for me. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know, because I could have been an alcoholic. I could have battled substance abuse. Although I do battle um, my battle with depression and anxiety. Um, all of those things attach themselves to you when you're grieving poverty. They don't define you. They don't define you. No, they don't. No, they don't. You just learn to manage it. Labels are <laughs> something else, aren't they? They are. Labels. Oh, my gosh. Labels. Labels can make you or break you. They really can. And I tell people all the time, I do not wear labels. I do not wear labels. I don't care if they tell me. Some people, they'll call me to speak at churches, and they'll like, okay, what's your title? Prophetess, apostle? I'm none of that. I'm just a girl from the hood that God did something for. And I'm just here to tell the people about what he did for me and that he has no respect of person and that he could do the same for you. He hasn't for. given me any other title. Right. So I don't wear them. And I'm not hungry for a title. What I'm hungry for is to be a difference, be that inspiration, be that motivation, be that person to empower and inspire someone else to get to the next level. Because if I can get them from the ground level to, to the next level, they now start to develop that hope. They then start to build that esteem and that confidence that will help catapult them to the next level and then get them to a place where they no longer need me but they look back and say thank you the same way that I'm looking back to say thank you yes, no ma'am. different than the men in the bible with the talents yes. and they, one came back to tell God thank you well, whether Beyonce said it or not say my name Angelica Norton a great American success story a great American success story if, if there ever I can was only one. pray and yes. hope that that's yes. what it is Yes. And that something that my children can be proud of and that my grandchildren can be proud of, that my legacy, I, I think too much and too often on legacy. Um, I thought about it at 20. I thought about it at 25. I thought about it at 28, uh, 30. My legacy. What is my legacy? What is my contribution to humanity? What is my contribution to this world? And that's to leave it better than I found it. Or as Janet Jackson asked the question so succinctly, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> yes. What have you done for yourself lately? What have I done for myself lately? Have you lately? been kind to yourself? Yes. Have you taken care of your body, which is a temple? Yes. We have to do all of those things. All the and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, you have to take care of your mental, your emotional, your humor side, your, um, your physical side, your um, psychological side. We have to take care of all aspects of who we are because the more you pour, the more you need to be filled. Right. Life is tough nowadays. It is. Those <laughs> heads are bent down and they're constantly looking at something. And their phones, and that's, a, again, it's a distraction. Yes. We're constantly distracted. I, while dare, we're... I dare you. I challenge you to put <laughs> your head down and read the Bible. Yeah. Or read a book. Yeah, read a book. Read a book. I get so many be people. Be very careful because you may learn something. You may. You're guaranteed to learn you. something. You're guaranteed to learn something. Absolutely you are. And when I meet people and they tell me, oh, I would buy, purchase your book, but I don't really read. I say, sweetie, I would rather you tell me that you're not interested than to tell me that you don't read. Don't ever tell me that you don't read because the old, and back in the old days, they say, if you want to if you wanna hide something from African Americans or blacks, you put it in a book. Nowadays, we, you cannot sit and tell me that they're correct because if you tell me that they were right, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I know that they were wrong. And if you just give yourself an opportunity to open a book and to be open minded to receiving what's in it. Now, I'm not saying go read a sex book or something like that. I'm saying read this, get this content with some, in, some enhance, yes, enhance. to enhance your life, yes. um, to inform improve. you and improve you. That is what changes you. I, I pride myself on having CS community service, a CS degree, CS Christian service. Yes. And CS degree. <laughs> In common sense. In common sense. What? Now that's the that's the benefit of growing up in the hood. I have a lot of common sense. <laughs> I 
I have a lot of common sense and what you can pull over some people head you really can't pull over my head because I also have spiritual sense which means discernment yeah if you know better you do better yeah so I have now the book knowledge I have the spiritual wisdom and that I'm constantly praying for more daily um, because you have to pray for wisdom and then knowledge and understanding because the bible says in all you're getting get understanding and then he also says people perish for lack of knowledge so you need all of these things you need all of these components right. to make up the better you right i'm sure we're probably running low not on content but running low on time <laughs> yes i'm sure we are and uh let's go ahead and wrap up this edition yes. of issues and answers we've had as our guests for this edition angelica norton a seed sowing sister <laughs> keeps sowing seeds yes. of righteousness and uh, improvement, improvement and, and self direction. If you yes, will. self sufficiency, all of that, all of that and good her stuff. Declaration of Independence. Happy and safe <laughs> guys. Fourth of July. Happy and safe Fourth of July. Thank you, my mentor. You're very kind. <laughs> Samson. I didn't come from a very rich family and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to and then